Uh, at times, you know, we, we disagree with judges uh, on how they handle situations, but we always... Because we are all in this together. We will solve this as a state and as a community. This is a deeply personal issue for me as well. Uh, when the governor asked myself and the commissioner to co-chair a task force to try to ferret out real solutions to this crisis just a couple of years ago, we began a journey that took us to the North Country all the way to Long Island and convening not just people in the field, but people in recovery, family members who've had to endure the unspeakable, bearing a child who succumbed to this addiction. And we believe that we found a path forward, not a once one catch-all solution because none exists, but we found a number of things which are so telling. Unlike the crises of the past, I believe that much of this has been fueled because we had pharmaceutical companies that did everything in their power to get opiate-based prescription drugs in the hands of doctors, persuading doctors and dentists that this is the only and best way to get people out of their pain, regardless of whether it was my teenage children who were given a 30-day supply of hydrocodone to deal with a two-day pain of having their wisdom teeth removed, or other individuals like the young quarterback from a football team whose mother took him in for an injury and he was given a 60-day supply, became addicted, and succumbed a few, few years later. So what we have now are people, yes, we've always had people who self-medicate, who are in need of alternative means of dealing with life. We'll always have that. But in this case, the reason we hit epic proportions is that so many people listened to someone in a lab coat that they trusted, who not intentionally, but were part of creating a solution that is far larger than we could have anticipated. So we have countless individuals who became addicted. After 14 days, your brain chemistry changes. You may not think so, but indeed it does. And if you cannot re continue receiving a prescription fill that leads you to the streets, that leads you to heroin, and then you're at risk of unscrupulous drug dealers who think nothing of lacing that heroin with fentanyl, the size of a, a sugar, a, a salt, a grain of salt, could kill you. And I never quite understood this business model because you're killing your customers, but obviously that didn't stop them because individuals in desperate times are often in search of that next high. But this affected my own family personally. When I had a nephew, a high school student, who worked at a delicatessen and cut his hand on a meat slicer, went to the doctor, prescribed the very drugs I'm talking about, exactly what I told you about, led to addiction, led to the streets, led to a decade of putting his mother and our family through hell as he tried to find a path forward. And indeed, we thought he had found that path. He was in graduate school at UB and was actually mentoring other people, trying to help them recover. And he had one day, after a breakup with a girlfriend, he went back to something he thought he had given up. And because of the fentanyl content, we, he slipped away and we lost him. And I'll never forget the scene at his funeral. There were hundreds of people who showed up, people that he had been a mentor to, helping them on their path. So it was doubly heartbreaking to see the scourge of this illness and how it has penetrated and literally destroyed communities and families. So that is why this is such a hopeful day for me, to know that we can bring a new facility, an expansion, a mobile unit, which may look like an RV <laughs> recreational vehicle, but to me that's a recovery vehicle. Because when that shows up in an area that otherwise is hard to access, or people just say, I just can't get the help I need to recover, this is going to pull up. And people are going to say, I'm going to be OK. And people are going to be able to come here in a year and have more treatment beds, something we've had a dire shortage of. Because we believe that, yes, we can change the laws. Yes, we can sue the pharmaceutical companies. And indeed, we are. Because in my mind, they're no different than the tobacco companies that knowingly put a product out there in the market that they knew was addictive and could lead to death. We're going after them as well. And they're going to help pay for the services that we now have to pay for at the state of New York.
But be proud that your state has not run from this problem. We have embraced this problem. We have leaned into this problem and said, yes, we'll restrict the number of pills that can be prescribed. We'll ensure that you have to be approved by, and you have automatic prior approval. I never understood why it was so difficult to get treatment. You walk into an emergency room, you're having a heart attack. They don't send you away to get prior approval from your insurance company. They sent my nephew away countless times for prior approval and he never made it back in. That is stopped in our state. So we have done a lot. I continue to rely on the people of this council and the people who are in law enforcement and people who are the providers and the people in recovery and the family to continue telling us your solutions. We're not done with this yet. Yes, we feel like we're turning a corner a little bit. I live in Erie County. The deaths finally are declining from over 300 a year to a little bit less than 300 a year. Uh, that's still an awful lot of faces looking out at you when you open up the obituary page on a Sunday of not octogenarians but 20 and 30 year olds. But we're making this, at least turning the corner because of the awareness now. The, the drugs prescribed, addictive drugs being prescribed are declining now. There's an awareness out there. It's only been a year and a half and, um, and we have everybody in place right now. It, it's, it's, it's almost surreal uh, that it happened so quick. Um, it looks like uh, we have a target date for December 3rd for our jail to have counselors in our jail along with recovery peers in our jail. Uh, that's a new funding stream that uh, it looks like is going to happen December 3rd. Uh, so we'll be able to go bed to bed from our county jail uh, with transportation. And then the big thing is the handoff from rehabilitation to recovery. And I think that's always what we've really looked for is that peer advocacy coach or that peer coach to take them from from the rehabilitation portion to the recovery bed um, and that's that portion is going to be there now so we're going to have that happening in Orleans County it's 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 you know God bless uh, everybody who's come together to make this happen building the 16 bed detox is going to be crucial because now, that? so that is in the design phase we're hoping to open December of next year that's a I think optimistic but on this campus on this campus right behind the community residence. So at that point in time, we would have outpatient, we would have um, opioid treatment program with all three of the FDA approved medications. We would have a community residence, we would have a supportive living apartment program, which is next door. And then we would have a 16 bed detox. So basically we'd have all the continuum of care. And so somebody could come here, start in detox, go to inpatient, go from inpatient to outpatient, and then when they're done, six months into it, they could transfer into a, a three-quarter house as well, you know, their supportive living apartments. And we also got a grant this last year to build permanent housing. So that's been our big push for the next couple of years is to, is to build permanent housing for people, like families, with, with, a, with a family member who has substance use disorder. Because housing and a safe place to live is huge. I mean, oftentimes people leave our programs and they just don't have a good place to go to. So we did get a grant for, um, we built two units in Orleans County this year. We have five units here and we got a grant for next year to build six in each county. So that's a little, you know, that's a little trickier. And that's not really a program. It's really just permanent housing with some case management. So we do have a case manager that can stay in touch with the families and make sure that they have what they need.